Let's take a look at 1D collisions first with totally inelastic collisions. This has a particularly easy mathematical form because we have the simplification where the objects stick together when they collide. So let's start with two masses, so M1 and V1 initial and M2 and V2 initial. Now remember the velocity is in vectors and so they have uh, magnitude and direction. The direction is just given by the minus sign because or plus because we're in one dimension. So we have uh, momentum conservation still. So we have used, we can use that to solve for what happens after the collision. And we also have that the objects stick together, which means the final velocity of uh, uh, 2 is equal to the final velocity of 1. We'll just call that the final. So they have, they're stuck together, they both move at the same velocity after the collision. So momentum conservation then tells us that the momentum of the, of the initially, we have the momentum of the two separate objects, one initial, plus one, plus the mass of the second times the velocity of the second, remember these are vectors now, the v's are, is equal to then the velocity after the fact, they're stuck together, so one object with the mass equal to the total mass moving at some final velocity. And so given our initial conditions, we can solve directly for the final velocity. Our final velocity then is m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial over m1 plus m2. And so there it is. You know, the um, collisions is one of those times where a lot of times we can derive the equations once and we can just use those over and over again. Let's do a, a, a particularly, no, let's just do an example and particularly anything. Uh, let's we get of ourselves two masses, this case uh, four kilograms going six meters per second and another mass going with five kilograms going eight meters per second and let's say they're moving in one dimension toward each other and they collide totally inelastically. What is the final velocity? Okay, so let's not make the mistake and use equations before we set up our picture. It, the problem said they're moving toward each other. So if this is four and this is six, uh, eight of course, sorry, the five mass, so the second one is five, yes. Okay, so four was going one direction at six meters per second, and the other one was going the other direction at eight meters per second. We know they were moving toward each other. All right, so I need to set up a coordinate system, and the coordinate system is going to give me information about the direction of these velocity vectors. If I choose positive x to go into the right, I can do either, then that means this is a, a positive six meters per second, and this is a negative eight meters per second. So you can see how important it is to identify your coordinate system so you can determine the sign of your, your vector quantities. All right, so now I, after that I can go to essentially my uh, relationship for my final velocity. It's equal to the mass of 1, which is 4, velocity of initial of 1, which is 6, plus the mass of the second, times the velocity of the second, which is negative 8 meters per second. That's in the negative x direction. And the sum of the masses is 4 plus 5, so this is 24, 4 and 6, minus 8 times 5 is 40, over 9, it looks like negative 16 ninths. That is about negative 1.78 meters per second. Does this make sense? Well, the, this mass right here certainly had the larger momentum. It's it's heavier and um, has a has a larger speed, so its magnitude of the momentum is larger. So it makes sense that the result would then be going in in that direction, in the negative x direction. And of course, this this uh, velocity is much slower than each of them separately because um, the the mass one, of course, collided was going in the positive direction. So the answer makes sense, and um, that's a totally inelastic collision.